Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 60 of my Java video tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, I will pretty much finish up the video game. So, whenever lasers or torpedoes hit rocks or asteroids, they will blow up and play a sound effect. Whenever those torpedoes are fired, they will play a sound effect. Whenever the ship is hit by an asteroid, it will blow up. Everything pretty much all comes together in this part of the tutorial. And, underneath the video, I provided a link to a zipped archive for the whole entire thing sound effects and everything. So let's get into the code. The first thing we're going to do is go into Photon Torpedo and make a couple little changes here. It ends up I made a little slip up inside of this code whenever I set up the collision detection. See right here with Git Bounds, Git Width is not going to work. What I want to use instead here is Git X Center and that's going to give me my center point and then that's a method that's built into this guy. And this is going to have to be converted into an integer. And then we're basically going to do exactly the same thing here. Let's just copy this, except this is going to be get Y center. So to have this properly work for collision detection, we're going to have to work with the center points. And then get width and get height are all perfect. And that is the only change I need to make with photon torpedo. So let's go into the spaceship and make pretty much exactly the same change. Okay, so here we are in spaceship.java, and I'm pretty much going to make the same exact change here. we got to look for git bounds. So I'm just going to look for it, and there it is. And with this guy, again, we're going to go git X center, paste that in there, and this is going to be an integer again, except spaceship's a little bit bigger, so we're going to make that minus 14. And then we're going to do exactly the same thing here, except this is going to be 14, and then this is going to be get Y. There you are, collision detection all fixed for both the photon torpedo and the spaceship. And now we're done with spaceship, and now we have to go into the game board and make a bunch of changes. All right, so here we are in gameboard.java. Let's just start up at the top because we're going to have to change a whole bunch of different things. One of the first things we're going to have to change here, scroll down here to the bottom, is we're going to have to import some libraries so that sound works properly. And import sound libraries. Okay, that works. And what we're going to need is import javax.sound.sampled star. There we are, got that. And then we're going to have to import some exceptions, Java IO, because we're going to be working with a file, a sound file. So I've got to get that guy as well, put that on a separate line. Then we're also going to have to go import java.net because we're going to point at a URL or a uniform resource locator, which is going to end up being our sound file. And then import Java X swing because we're going to need a couple extra things for our J-frame to work, as this is a J-frame. It's much easier to load and play sounds inside of an applet, but I'm using a J-frame, so that's what we're going to do. And we're going to scroll down through here, make a couple other different changes. We're going to create a string, and this is going to link to one of the sound files. And you need to start it off with file, colon, and then in my situation, I have this in a source folder. So forward slash source, that's how you get into an upper level directory from where you currently are. And this is an AU file. So you got that saved. And then we're pretty much going to do exactly the same thing here, except this is going to be laser file. And then this is going to be laser.aiff. So there we are, that's just a point towards all of the audio files we're going to use. Actually, we're going to use another one called Explode, but that's going to be in rock.java. And then we scroll down in here a little bit more. Now, if I want to be able to play a sound, like here, I'm hitting the forward or the W key. Well, inside of Game Board, as you're going to see here in a second, I'm going to create a method called Play Sound Effect. And I'm just going to throw over to it the location of the thrust file audio file that's going to play. And then I'm basically going to do exactly the same thing inside of this area, wherever we are checking to see if the enter key has been clicked on. And if it has, we're going to send over to that method that we're going to create here in a second, the laser sound effect. So pretty easy. And actually, since we're inside of game board, I don't even need those nor do I need that guy right there. So let's just get rid of that. And then we're going to scroll down and we're actually going to create the method play sound effect. And way at the bottom of the game board class is where I'm going to create it. I'm going to make it public static void play sound effect. And it gets passed a string, of course, which is going to be the name for our file. So I'm going to call it sound to play. 
And then we need to create a, a uniform resource locator. I'm going to call it sound location. And it's just going to be a pointer to the resource that we're going to want to play here. And then we're going to go and put everything inside of a try block because anytime you work with files and things like that, you need to do that. I'm going to create a clip. And a clip is going to store a predefined audio clip for me. I'm just going to name it clip and go null. And then I'm going to go clip is equal to audio system get clip. And this is going to convert the audio to a playable format inside of this J frame. Then I'm going to call audio input stream. And this is going to hold a stream that's going to be of a definite length, which is going to be the length of my file. It knows everything right up front. And I'm just going to call that input stream for now. Scroll up here and give myself some room. Then we're going to go input stream is equal to audio system. Then we're going to have to say get audio input stream. And then we pass over to it the location for our file that we want to print out on the screen. And of course, spell audio right. Then after we have all that set up, we call clip.open and pass it input stream. And this is just going to make the audio clip available to be able to use. And then we can define how many times we would want this to loop. I'm going to say that I don't want it to loop at all. And then we need to say clip start right like that. And there you are. That'll play the clip for me. And then there's a whole bunch of exceptions that we need to catch here. So I'm going to scroll up and just print them all out. We need to catch malformed URL exception. We'll call it E1. And then just go E1 print stack trace just to keep this simple because this isn't an error catching tutorial this is a OOP principles as well as video game tutorial and then you're also going to have to go unsupported audio file exception and you can send it AU AIF files and WAV files and I actually use all of those different types of files in this tutorial can't send it anything else otherwise you will signal that exception to fire and then the last one is line unavailable exception and that handles all of the exceptions that I could possibly have. So then we need to start getting into some collision detection and making sure that asteroids or rocks disappear when they're hit and ships go in the right direction and end up in the center of the screen if they're hit and so forth and so on. So we need to scroll way down inside of here. I'm looking for cycle through all rock objects. Let's see if we can find that. And there it is. Okay, so we don't want to be able to show rocks if they're not visible. So we're going to go rock on screen like this, and we are not going to draw the rock if it is not visible, which totally makes sense. And that if block. And then also inside of this guy, we're going to handle moving the rock. So we're going to say rock move, and we're going to pass it the ship to check if there's a collision with the ship, as well as game board torpedoes so that we can check if there is a collision with any of the torpedoes. And of course, this is rock move. And we're going to create rock move here in a second. And that is all we need to do for the game board. So let's file save it and go fix up rock. Okay, so now we're going to have to come in here. And the first thing that I'm going to do is to create a string. And it's just going to hold a location for the explode sound effect. Remember, you have to put file inside of here. And if you want to jump up into a previous directory, you do it like that. And then, like I said, you can also use WAV files. So now we're going to be able to play that sound effect whenever the rock explodes. And then we're going to bounce down into the move because, remember, it's going to receive a spaceship, which we're going to refer to as the ship. And it's also going to receive an array list, which is going to be full of our photon torpedoes, which is just photon torpedo in this situation. And we're going to call those torpedoes. So that all works good. Then again, we're going to say if rock is currently on the screen, we're going to perform some actions here. And right here, after we check if the rocks are hitting each other, so we're actually going to move this up, we are then going to perform a bunch of checks to see if the ship is hit by a rock. And to do that, I'm going to go rectangle ship box is equal to the ship, and then call get bounds. And that is going to create an artificial rectangle around my ship. And then I'm going to be able to just go if other rock, which is going to be the name for the rock that we're cycling through. If we scroll up here, see other rock is going to be equal to rock get bounds, which is right here. So this is the guy we're going to be working with. And that rock comes from this, which is what we are cycling through. So we're cycling through all of the asteroids and we're asking it if at any point any of the other asteroids come in touch with our ship on the screen. And we're going to bounce out here. And if they do, we're going to go game board, play, sound, 
effect, and we're going to play the explode file sound. So there that goes. Pretty simple, actually. And then we're going to go the ship. If the ship explodes, we are going to just throw it back to the center of the screen because that seems to make sense. We're just going to go the ship, and then we're going to, to put it in the center of the screen, we need to go game board width and divide whatever the game board is by two. And then, of course, if we're going to put it center X, we're also going to have to put it center Y. And this is just going to change the height. So there we are. We are able to throw our ship into the center of the screen. And then another thing we want to do is go ship set X velocity to zero. So that's going to make the ship come to a complete stop because we don't want it to go into the center of the screen and then start flying around again. We want to give the player of the game a chance to just get their bearings straight. And then basically we need to do the same exact thing for all the torpedoes. So we're just going to go for photon, torpedo, torpedo, and this is the array list that we passed over called torpedoes. And then we're going to cycle through all the torpedoes and see if any of the rocks are hit by a torpedo. First thing we want to do, however, is make sure the torpedo is still on the screen. So we're just going to go on screen, because if it's not on the screen, well, it's not going to hit the rock. And then we need to check if the torpedo hits the rock. So we're going to go if, we're going to go other, rock. And then in this situation, I'm going to use contains. And we'll just see if the rock contains the center point for our torpedo. So I'll just go torpedo, get x center, call that nice method we had before. And then after that, we're pretty much going to do the same exact thing. We're going to say get y. And that's going to say is the center point two vectors for our torpedo anywhere inside of our rock. And if they are, that means that we just had a torpedo hit a rock. So we're going to say rock on screen. Obviously, if it's been hit by a torpedo, it's going to be deleted. So there we are. We just deleted that. And also, the torpedo is no longer going to be on the screen because it, we're guessing, has been blown up when it hit the rock or the asteroid. And then we're going to play a game board sound effect again. So play, sound, effect, explode, file. And there we are. So let's file save it and let's run this guy and see how it turns out. And you can see here, I don't know if you can hear this or not, but as I hit the spaceship, it, it just exploded. But I can fly around and you can see it exploded again and then I can also shoot lasers and all kinds of crazy sounds go flying out of this guy but you can see the asteroids explode and of course I could do animations with these asteroids but that's gonna use different image files and so forth to make that work out for me but either way it is a working asteroids game with sound and 100% collision detection. Like I said, the location for the zipped archive is available underneath all of the video. You can get it right now. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.